Well, I was on vacation this week. Um, I always try to do at least one sort of project for myself. Usually most, most of my vacation is spent doing work around the house that I neglect when I'm not on vacation. But I always try to build at least one project of some sort. And this is the project I built for this vacation. This is a uh, dim bulb tester with a uh, variac. And I've got this set up, pardon the noise when I move this, i got this set up to where it's plugged into an isolation transformer. Um, I've gotten into vintage test equipment here. So I, I had two items that I specifically built this for at the moment. I had a, well you just saw it in the video there, ICO 950B that I purchased that was advertised as basically a guy bought it as a project he never got to. He'd had it for a long time. He hadn't plugged it in. It never plugged it in. Well, I wasn't plugging it in until uh, I had some sort of a current limiting system. So um, I decided to build this. It's a little bit more elaborate than what most people do, but I kind of like to make things somewhat nice. But let me. Uh, open this up here and I'll show you what's inside So basically I've just got a big um, Variac in there that adjusts the voltage. Um, got a couple voltage and current meters. Unfortunately there are a couple chi comms because that's what I had. Um, I originally used this box for another purpose and it had some um, Simpson 2122 series meters in it. And I'm hoping to find some of that same same style of meter to put in there eventually. The ones that I had were DC volts and DC amperes and I needed AC and I had these junk chai comms that I bought a long time ago just sitting around so I used it. Um, I've got two switches in there. One's an on off switch to the Variac. The other one I don't have connected yet. I haven't decided. I'm, I have that in there to um, jump out the low bulb but I'm not sure I'm going to do that or not because I'm kind of half afraid I'm going to forget that I've had that thing jumpered out and I'm going to flip the thing on and all heck can break loose on some component that I'm not sure about but um, also this isn't totally finished yet I've got a couple circuit breakers in there and then a couple of um, basically breaker trip lamps that I'm either going to use the ones up there. I had two holes I needed to plug, so I dropped those two lamps into there to plug the holes off. But I think I'm going to use these two since they're on the front panel. A little bit easier to see. But I'm going to wire them basically in parallel with those circuit breakers with one of those trips, and it gives me a visual indicator that that happened, which more than likely it won't happen. But basically, you got a light bulb and a switch and a receptacle. And it works pretty good. You can just different light bulbs. I've got. I found that for most tube electronics, a 200 watt bulb is pretty much what you need. I've spent some time searching around at bargain stores or junk stores and found a bunch of 200 watt bulbs, and I've actually found some 100 watt, 60 watt, and 40 watt, and 25 watt bulbs. So I've got a whole selection depending upon whatever project I'm plugging into here. But I just thought that I would show this, and whenever I did this. Um, I would I did some research on a couple of um, a couple of guys that I'm subscribed to on YouTube, and they can. I'm gonna post a link in the comments section to those two videos, since those are the two videos that when I decided to do this, I kind of used as a little bit of information, and you can go watch their videos, and then they they'll explain the 
operation of this a lot better than I can. I know I know how it works, but I'm not very good at explaining things sometimes. So um, those two guys are excellent at explaining how this sort of thing works. So you can watch them. But what I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to plug in my ICO 950B, and I'll show you how it works out. And luckily, the, the ICO 950B seemed to be just fine. It works just fine, but you never know that when you get a piece of equipment that's 55, almost, well, actually, 1954 is a year inside of it, so it is 60 years old. And I really didn't want to plug this thing in and have it go boom. But let me close this up and we'll hook it up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I'm going to plug in this isolation transformer. And I'll plug in the ICO. Bring this out here a little closer. Okay, flip that on. Now I'll flip the load light on. And I'll crank the voltage up. Turn on the uh, turn on the ICO. As you can see, the bulb or the uh, tube is warming up. I found even with this 200 watt bulb, even though I have pretty much full voltage output, I've got let's see, what's it? Let's display say well, right about 125 volts. But even at that. Um, it seems as though the, the uh, eye tube does not um, light very brightly. Uh, this comes in really handy if you want any type of um, electronics. i just give you a uh, an example of how this can actually help you out. This happened to be a brand, well not brand new, but let's put it this way, never used capacitor that is probably 40 years old. Aluminum electrolytic, it's a Cornell de Billier WBR, eight microfarad, 450 volts DC. Now, let me, uh, show you the leakage characteristics of this. I've got it on the electrolytic test. Now let me run that up. Remember this is a 450 volt DC rated capacitor. Now right there that eye shadow does not open back up anymore. And if you measure the voltage across there That's only 130 volts. And that thing at 130 volts is so leaky that that eyeshadow doesn't open up yet. That's not even half what that capacitor is rated at. And you can see right there is about half, and that's closed right off. And notice how it just right there is 450. It doesn't even begin to open. So that brand new, well, let's put it this way, NOS never used 40 year old capacitor is basically no good. Now one thing I'm going to use this ICO for is I'm going to try and reform a couple of these old capacitors. I don't know whether it's possible. I've got some uh, old Cornell de Billier Beaver capacitors uh, that are really old. Again, new old stock. I got a whole bunch of stuff from a guy whose um, uncle had a TV repair shop back when I was only maybe 20 years old. Um, this guy said, hey, I'm coming to get this stuff. My um, aunt doesn't want it. The uncle died. 
and I got a whole bunch of components like this, but to tell you the truth, most of it's pretty much junk when it comes to the capacitors. I got a bunch of old transistors, old germaniums from the 50s even that are in pretty good shape though. But anyways, I just thought I'd show that to you and show you an example of this load lamp. And I'll end this video and then I'll show you another um, uh, another um, application that I also wanted to build this for. It involves this, that Textronics, Tektronics EMM scope that I did a video on fairly recently. And I guess I'll treat that as part two, but it, it isn't going to be a part two fixed. It's just going to be a part two um, discovery and then I'm going to move on from there. This might be a multi-part or I might just decide it's not worth fixing and just leave it at part two. But um, I'll end this video now and I'll start the next one once I have this Tektronix oscilloscope connected up.